Kathy and Maria. Good, excellent, wonderful. So I, I'm going to shut this door over here because I don't want the people sitting here looking out the window. Believe it or not, if you sit there, you can look out the window out there. There. And maybe you'll see what I saw before looking out in the field. There were two geese with their little goslings. I think they were going for a swimming lesson. <laughs> I'm not sure. Whatever. But how's everybody doing? Things a little bit different tonight. But as I said to a couple of, towards the back, that uh, don't worry for having to sit up towards the front because we're not charging anymore. Yeah. At least I don't think we are. So, right? I hope so. Did you bring them with you? Yeah, no, they brought me. Okay, that's fine. Hi, Marilyn. <laughs> I forgot her name once, that's why I have to let her know that I was there for you, whatever. <laughs> uh, well, service is a little different tonight. Number one, you're going to need the bulletin. Number two, much of what we have on Sunday on the screen is not going to be on the screen. So that means that we're going to be using the hymnals. You know, it's very interesting. Um, you know, when the hymnals come out, we pay $20, $25 a hymnal. We're looking at, uh, in churches, thousands of dollars, and then they decide to put everything on the screen and the hymnals are not used. So we're basically going to be using the hymnal on Wednesday night. I hope that doesn't scare you away. You know, most of the people here can read. <laughs> well, there's one guy that said that a few back here said, well, okay, just fake it, move your lips. <laughs> no, nobody will uh, know that in terms of that. Uh, for communion intention, you will come up this side first, you'll get the wafer from me, and then you can go and dip the wafer in the wine that Keith will be holding. If you prefer grape juice, we will be taking the tray down from the altar and putting it on that little table there. And uh, you'll be able to take one of the little uh, cups of uh, grape juice if that's what you prefer for uh, your communion distribution tonight. And uh, also, after we sing the hallelujah, sit down, because I'm going to be doing something a little bit different as far as the uh, message and the reading of the gospel tonight. And I'm just asking that when I do that, please, please don't walk out. You know, just live with it for at least tonight, or whatever, whatever. And if you, if you don't like it, sometimes I say tough. Let me know, you know, in terms of that. So, you've got all of the announcements that I have in your bulletin on the last page. And so take a look at those. Special meeting for this coming Sunday. Uh, for uh, calling the candidate to be uh, the next pastor here at St. John's and worship service, vacation Bible school. The one that's there that you don't have, you want to be here on Father's Day. How many of you like ice cream? You want to be here on Father's Day because I've been informed there is an ice cream social on that day in recognition of Father's Day. And my understanding is it's favorite. You don't have to be a dad to be there. You know, get no, no. Uh, so just just come and enjoy the fellowship that morning. Anything else I should be sharing? We're having a meeting tonight for the uh, garage committee. Oh, right after service. You mean the shed committee? Shed committee. Not the garage committee. We don't have a garage committee. Not yet. We have a shed committee. <laughs> Big difference. Okay. And thanks for the work that you folks are doing on that in terms of that. So then with that in mind, as you are able, I invite you to stand as we use the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, 
We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now if you will turn to hymn number 588, there's a wideness in God's mercy. We're singing verses 1 and 4 of that hymn. still standing a responsive reading of the verses from Psalm 50. Listen, my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will bear witness against you, for I am your God. I am God. I will not accept a calf from your stalls, nor goats from your pens. I know every bird of the mountains, and the creatures of the fields are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the whole world is mine, and all that is in it. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you and you shall honor me. The Alleluia verse. <laughs>
be seated. And I invite you to keep the gospel text printed in the bulletin in front of you. Dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. You're going to be asked to choose what you want me to preach on. I'm tempted to say I'm going to ask you to tell me how long you want me to preach, but I'm afraid to do that. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because in the text that we have assigned for tonight, if you take a look at it, there are a whole bunch of things going on. Not just one, not just two, but I picked out five, possibly six different things that one could preach on. Consider at the beginning. If you take a look at the text, you're going to see that Jesus calls Matthew to follow him. And the interesting thing about Jesus calling Matthew is that Matthew is a despised tax collector. You know, if you think people working for the IRS might have a bad reputation today, nothing compared to how the people of Israel felt about the tax collectors in those days. They had, in a sense, bought their job working for the Roman government. And it was understood that there would be kind of a surcharge to the taxes they collected on behalf of the Romans. And just like you and me, the people of Israel did not like paying taxes. And so there's a surprise when Jesus calls Matthew. Then Jesus, I believe together with Matthew, goes to dinner. And Matthew's not the only bad guy there. Jesus sits down and eats with, as we find out from his opposition, sinners and tax collectors. And doing that, Jesus broke again some of the customs of the day. Well, Jesus' enemies see that, <clears throat> and uh, they're not happy. And so they basically say to him, why are you sitting down and eating with sinners and tax collectors? Why aren't you eating with people like us, the good, righteous people of Israel, the religious leaders of the people? And Jesus says something that's common sense. I haven't come for those who are righteous. In other words, I haven't come for those who are without sin. I have come for those who are sinful. And it's kind of like, you know, why do you go to a doctor? Do any of you go to a doctor when you're really feeling healthy? Come on, you know. Maybe you do if you've got an exam scheduled for the year out or whatever, but you go to the doctor when you're ill. And that's what Jesus is. I haven't come for you guys, meaning the righteous, not, not you just because I'm pointing that way, not, I'm not, you know, whatever. But the fact that he's come for this guy. And he's come for all of us who aren't righteous, who are sinful. So you can see, I've already got, what, let's see, there's Matthew, there's eating dinner, there's the opposition, Jesus, you know, as a physician, whatever. Uh, that's four things already I could have talked about. Then the fifth thing happens. A religious leader, the leader of a synagogue comes to him and he says, Jesus, Jesus, my daughter has just died. You can imagine the plea being made by this father of this young girl. But he goes on to say, if you come with me, I still know, I still believe that there's something you can do about it. Point number five, I don't know. And so Jesus starts off going. And as he's going, there's a woman who has been ill for 
12 years, as I remember, with a hemorrhage, an ongoing hemorrhage. And she believes that she just touches Jesus' cloak, she'll be healed. And that's what happens. She touches his cloak, she is healed, and Jesus says, your faith has made you well. But that's not the end of the story. It continues to where Jesus comes to the home where the leader of the synagogue lives. Inside is his dead daughter. But Jesus says to the crowd that is gathered there, stop your wailing, stop your playing of the flute, because the girl inside is alive. And do you know what the people did? They laughed at him. And then I would ask the question, have you ever been laughed at because of your Christian faith? Jesus goes in, takes the little girl's hand, Tabitha, arise, and she is given new life. Now, which of those do you want me to preach on this morning? Or I should say tonight. Five minutes for each. I just did? I don't know why I bothered writing this up, you know, whatever. Yeah, but there are a few more things to say. So is that okay if I say, but not, on, not all seven? Maybe six. And I'm gonna do that from up here because there's a very practical reason for me to come up here. You know what that is? Why? How you guys, I can't keep, you're right. Gotta have my water. When I started this <clears throat> early in the week, um, the thought that came through my head was also, who do we compare ourselves to when we're looking at other people? Now, I know that if you're talking about sports, we usually take a look at the stars. We take a look at the winners. Um, we take a look at the golfers. And am I smart enough to know that I can never compete with them? As a matter of fact, I figured out long ago that if I were to make a living at golfing, I would have starved together about 55 years ago in terms of that. So now if I'm going to compare myself, to, and by the way, Kathy, if you don't have to worry about me and my skills on the piano because, you know, one thing I learned, what do they call it, chopsticks? You don't have to worry. I think what happens when we have a tendency to compare ourselves to others, we usually compare ourselves to those we think are worse than us. Because that makes me feel better. Take a look at so-and-so. Because when we compare ourselves that we, for some reason, consider ourselves to be better than, we come out on top. Even though we don't deserve to. The gospel tonight gives us a view of the various scenarios that I talked about. A tax collector. Jesus sitting down with sinners and other tax collectors. The religious leaders who thought themselves who were better. But we also see the faith of the woman who touches Jesus' cloak. We also see the faith of the religious leader who knows that his daughter has physically died and yet still comes to Jesus and says, you can do something. Then we go on, and the little girl was given new life. Jesus heals, Jesus gives new life, and I proclaim to you tonight that through his crucifixion and resurrection, 
Jesus has come to you, to me, to all of us who are here, and gives us new life in him. The woman is healed. Jesus says, your faith has made you well. Which of those words would you feel to yourself is more important? Heal or faith? We believe in Christ's presence in the midst of life, in the midst of all things. In the midst of the life of a woman who for 12 years had issues with health. For the father whose child has died. For the little girl who was given new life. So I simply would say that when we think about comparing ourselves to others, let's stop and ask, why are we doing that? And why are we especially picking on that particular person or group to compare with? Matthew, from being a tax collector profiteer, now becomes a new disciple moving from outcast to follower. The woman's illness had separated her from many others in society who would have nothing to do with someone that was considered to be unclean. But now she is restored. And the young child basically seen as without value in those days is given new life. And I'm going to guess that in her years to come, people would remember that it's she who was dead, but to whom that Jesus gave new life. I don't know how true this is, but one writer has said, as I close, that according to today's gospel. What does it take to be a disciple of Jesus? It takes one who is a sinner and who has received God's forgiveness. And I believe that's true for all of us. Amen. Okay. Now for the sermon for my paper. Well, nobody's moving, so I guess I could go, no, 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 no. I think, what do we have here? Do we have a hymn to sing? No, we don't have a hymn to sing. We do that on Sunday. But we have a confession of faith to make, so I invite you to rise. It's in your bulletin as we confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, our prayers of intercession, I will be ending the petitions with God in your mercy. Your response, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for the church. Unite us with any on the margins, that the whole world recognizes that your mercy is greater than our human capacity to restrict it. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for creation. Tend forests and fields and safeguard all cattle, birds, and wild animals. Preserve lakes, rivers, and oceans, and send rains to water the earth. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
We pray, O oh God, for the nations. Awaken our leaders' compassion for people who have too often felt forgotten or neglected and inspire policy solutions that promote equity and inclusion. God, in your mercy, we pray, O oh God, for all who are in need, accompany anyone during chronic illness, any who suffer in secret, and those grieving a loved one's death. Send healing for all who plead for relief from sickness or pain, especially Joan, Beverly, Chuck, Kurt, and others we name before God at this time. God, in your mercy, we pray, O oh God, for the eradication of racial hatred. On this week, when we commemorate the Emmanuel 9, we implore you to cast out the demons of white supremacy that make us believe lies about ourselves and our neighbors. God, in your mercy, we give thanks, O oh God, for all the saints. Renew our faith that you can do what you have promised and raise us with all our beloved ones to new life. God, in your mercy, your receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The offering plates are in, in the back. They're going to come forward. We'll put those on the altar, and then we'll join together in the offering prayer. And I'll tell you, while he's doing that, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Greet your fellow worshipers. Please join with me in the offering prayer. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Oftentimes the consecration of the elements is done uh, by the uh, pastor, but uh, one practice that we are able to participate in is inviting the laity of the church to assist with that. And so I will be speaking now the uh, printing in the light color and you in the bowl. As we now come to receive Holy Communion, we see communion happening at many levels. With this bread, we will hear the words. This is my body. We see a communion of bread and the body of Christ. The two come together for us. With this cup, we will hear the words. We see a communion of the cup and the blood of Christ. The two come together for us. When we receive this body and blood, we are a communion with Christ. Christ. 
As we commune with Christ, we also commune with one another. We are united, not just by being in the same place at the same time, but with all who share in the sacrament. Amen. At this time, we will be praying the Lord's Prayer, but pay attention. It is the more contemporary version that we will be using on Wednesdays during the summer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And uh, we're going to ask that the folks on, on my left, on your right, will be coming down in single file, and then you'll be going to uh, keep the dipping after you've received the bread.
As you are able, please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ may strengthen us and keep us in his grace for tonight and for always. Amen. And now the benediction. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. Tell all the folks, you know, what a wonderful time you had tonight, that even the pastor was almost okay, and that uh, he'll try to be better. So with that in mind, go and be certain, Lord, and thanks be to God. <laughs>